Welcome back, everybody. If you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about gasket removal and the easiest way to do that in our eyes. It does depend on the situation, and there's a lot of different methods that can be used, anything from harsh abrasives and chemicals to uh, something as simple as a razor blade. So we'll go over a few of those and show you what works best depending on the situation that you're in to get your gasket removed easiest. All too often when we start a project like this, the first thing we'd like to do is just pull the head gasket off or whatever gasket off that you're working on and just go ahead and get your wire brush and just start working away, right? That very quickly ruins the head. This is a junk head. I'm not worried about whatsoever. Do not use a wire brush. Do not use anything on a drill or anything like that on a head, on a crankcase gasket, uh, on anything like that because you will quickly ruin it. It doesn't take but a few seconds, even if you're careful at low speed, to take off too much metal where this isn't going to be flat anymore and it's not going to seal. It'd be junk very quickly. Razor blade, if you're going to use that, a lot of people like to use these things to get a better grip. I don't like to use that because then you're kind of putting too much force. You've got way too much behind it. You don't want that much behind it when you're doing this. It's all about the technique. You want to work from different angles and stuff. If it's not taking it up one angle or you start scratching, go to a different angle. As soon as you see any scratch made by your razor blade, you want to replace it. When you get around these edges and stuff, what happens is that your razor blade will get nicked up and then it'll start to scratch as you're going. Once that happens, you can do the same thing with the razor blade. Get it out of plane. That's not what you want. Do not be aggressive. If you feel like you may have a hard time with that, Use something plastic. They, they sell scrapers like this. They actually sell plastic razor blades that ensure that you're not going to ruin the metal when you do this. They do take significantly longer and they don't last long. I don't use them because of that. But I did buy this set a long time ago. Worked very well for just a couple times for scraping. After that, it didn't seem like it worked well at all. Some people will even use like a uh, just a paint scraper on it. It doesn't really matter what you use if you're doing it manually as long as you're not scratching the metal. Use a good technique, go from different angles, keep it as light as you can. Do not gouge it. Many people like to use harsh chemicals or gasket removers and they do work. They'll dissolve the gasket if you let it sit. Many of them take an extremely long time. Isopropyl alcohol helps to a little extent <clears throat> in a very quick manner and it's not harsh. Uh, carburetor cleaner will work to an extent. It dries out real fast. We're just going to, on this junk block, spray a couple of these spots and let them soak and see kind of if that helps versus the rest of the area after we let it sit for a while. Again, many people use things such as carburetor cleaner or even paint thinner. I'm not gonna get that out. I don't like using harsh chemicals. But I'll see how the carburetor cleaner does. I don't normally do that on gaskets. Some people swear by it. We also have these carbide scrapers that we're gonna test here shortly. We're gonna put those to the test on both a head gasket that we're working on and then I've got a valve cover gasket job coming right up also. We've got this head gasket that was blown out real bad. We're going to remove it and see how these different methods do as far as scraping the old head gasket material off. First up, carbide scraper. They make a bunch of these different ones. These are the longer versions. We've got the shorter versions also that we use depending on how big of an area you have that you can fit in. If you use this perpendicular across the surface and you just lightly want to drag and pull that off, if you keep it 100% flat, it will not scratch anything and it'll remove very easily. Now, if you start to see scratches or anything like that in it, you'll wanna stop immediately. That's not good. You're taking more off than you should be when you're doing that. This works very well for doing this. If you push too hard though, you'll get pretty abrasive and aggressive scratches no matter the situation when you're working against aluminum. 
stay as flat as possible and you won't have any issues. I don't like it because I tend to try to push too hard and I will get some deep scratches. Do it very lightly and master the technique and it does very well. With it being a valve cover that you're just going to uh, use a Permatex on to put back on, I'm not worried if this gets some scratches in it. Wire brush is gonna be best for one like that. And that's what I normally use to get stuff off of your valve cover. That's if you're gonna use a Permatex to put it back on. It doesn't matter if this is scratched, that Permatex fills all those scratches. Obviously you don't want deep gouges in it. You still want it to be good. Uh, apply a good amount. Looks like someone applied a great amount to this one when they put it back on. But this just on a drill, take all this stuff off. I usually just run a razor blade around first. Kind of take all the big stuff off. You, you can spend hours scraping gaskets. And trust me, I have many, many times. With these methods, it just seems much easier and much quicker. So again, get all that big stuff off. And then that wire brush will make easy work out of it. Let's check out here with the, I'll show you just how nice this razor blade works on it. it. Just, you can get all around without taking any of this stuff out. You don't get everything scratched up. As soon as you start scratching, you get a new razor blade. That is my go-to method. Anytime I do any kind of gasket removal is a razor blade. I love it. I don't think there's, there's anything out there that touches it in most cases. This next case I'm showing you, it's kind of hard to get a razor blade in there. So the other method we use takes the cake, I think, on it. When we're removing the valve cover gasket from one of these Briggs V-Twins, it's very hard to get to, especially right here in between the fuel pump and there's a bolt in the way. What we're going to use is a Titan carbide scraper to get this off. On the outside, you can use any other method. Uh, if you can get that in there, it'll work well. But in this area, it's almost impossible. Put this so we don't get anything on. We're just gonna run this across. You want it as close to perpendicular as possible, and you don't wanna scrape away at the aluminum. It will take that aluminum off if you're at the wrong angle. Much easier than a razor blade, because a razor blade doesn't fit well in here to get the right angle. Now, it doesn't take much, and as soon as you get the majority of that big stuff off, all you need to do is just take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And the rest of that, with a little bit of elbow grease, will come right off. And you cause no damage, almost a quarter of it's done. See that just kind of eat away at it? Especially when it's real thin, it doesn't take long. Almost nothing left. I've been keeping this nice and wet with carb cleaner every few minutes, here for probably the last 20 or so since I started. Just keep spraying it down. Again, we're gonna see if that does anything in the short term. Uh, for loosening it up as far as using any other sort of chemicals that's not something i'm gonna do i just don't prefer that i've already got enough chemicals around here that we use and don't need any more harsh chemicals something that's bad for the environment and bad for anybody that works here i'm gonna skip out on those if we were using the rolock to take off the gasket material from the valve cover that'd be perfectly fine and as i said a a wire wheel is not going to hurt that whatsoever. Either one will work great. You would not want to use a wire brush or something like this on a block or on a head. Again, that is going to be too aggressive. It's going to take metal off that you don't want to take off. In that case, on any of these, I always use just a razor blade. Go around. Yes, it takes time. If you hold it right and you get good at it, 
it's extremely easy to get this stuff off. It's not a difficult process, but it is time consuming. You do have to have some patience or end up getting pretty good at it. Another good one for that is the carbide scraper. Now, once you get good with it, it can work just as well, but you have to be careful. Maybe practice on one that's junk. You have to be very careful because until you get real good at it, you can really mar up the metal, scratch it real bad. But these carbide scrapers do work well in certain instances. I don't use it very often. Again, I love just a regular old razor blade. Let's try the roll lock on here since this is something that is junk. We're not going to be doing anything with it anyway. See, and many people use that method, but I don't like those scratches. Those scratches, they don't, you can't really feel them, they're real light, but it is a scratch in the metal. Let's do it right here where we can see some factory marks and see if it takes that off or what it does. We, we were seeing some marks going this way. Now, we're seeing marks going the other way, and those are scratches in the metal. Although extremely light, they are scratches. Can't feel them, can't, you know, but I, I don't like taking metal off. And I you can tell you're taking some sort of the metal off when you're using this. That's why I don't recommend using this for the block, the sump, head, any of that stuff. Valve cover gaskets or valve covers, I'll use it on if it's something we're going to repermatex. Wire wheel, again, that would take off even more metal than this. Wouldn't want to use it here. Let's try this spot over here with the new razor blade where we've been spraying the carb cleaner. Again, this stuff's not exactly great for you either, but it's always around and not something else we have to add to the arsenal. So this stuff over here seemed pretty easy. Let's try another spot. See, that's a nice big spot that wasn't really stuck, but... So, I mean, it takes a little bit of time working your way around. Should have done this on one I was actually doing. <laughs> Let's see if it makes it any easier on this one here. I don't think so. I think if anything, it might have actually made it a little bit worse. Well, maybe it's coming up easier. I don't know. I think the result was nominal. If, if there was any help, it wasn't much. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into what to use to scrape your gasket material, whether it's a head gasket, valve cover gasket, crankcase gasket, any of that stuff. If you're scraping it off, you want to get it off as quickly as possible, but you also don't want to ruin anything. And the only way to ensure that from happening is to do it all by hand. There is no shortcut to this method in my point of view. What do you guys think? What method do you use? What's the easiest without ruining things? Would you call that ruined? I wouldn't want to do that to my machine or anybody else's and feel okay with it, putting those additional scratches there. Is it really going to matter? If you're using this drill extremely fast and you're putting, you know, uh, taking more metal off in one spot than the other, it's definitely going to matter. I wouldn't do it. Old school method, in my opinion. Hey, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content.